For almost 2,000 years, a belief in angels was a crucial part of Christianity. Islam and Jewish scriptures mention angels as well, but it was in the 5th century that a Christian mystic named Dionysus the Areopagite claimed he learned the hierarchy of angelic beings through visions and meditation. This author outlined nine choirs of angels with three sets grouped together as spheres. He's also referred to as the Pseudo-Dionysus because he made the bogus claim that he was an apostle of Paul mentioned in the Bible. Nonetheless, his celestial taxonomy has still been accepted by many theologians since the Middle Ages. The first sphere of angels classifies the seraphim, cherubim, and thrones. Seraphim are fiery serpent angels with four faces and six wings. They're the highest order of angels, representing love, light, and fire, burning away sin to purify the spirit. Their colleagues, the cherubim, are known as the keepers of God's knowledge, so they're like heavenly librarians, sometimes portrayed as sphinxes with wings and human faces. Later, they were conflated with Cupid and depicted as chubby babies with wings. They guarded the tree of knowledge in the Garden of Eden and foretold the coming of the Messiah in a vision to the prophet Ezekiel. The last choir from the first sphere of angels are called thrones, and these are some weird looking beings. They're basically glowing winged wagon wheels covered in eyeballs. Thrones govern God's justice and dispense his judgment. One legend says that most of the thrones were among the fallen angels who were banished from heaven and they now represent injustice and discord in hell! The second sphere contains angelic choirs known as dominions, virtues, and powers. Dominions are the middle management, receiving orders from the first sphere and doling out duties to angels lower in the family business. They keep universal order by empowering our authority figures. Dominions are also forces of nature, manifesting in the Earth's animals, plants, and minerals. Virtues, by contrast, are sparks of light that inspire us to study science, but not evolution. Sometimes they manifest as musicians, artists, or even physicists. They also emanate heavenly grace and are considered to be the source of all miracles. Last in the second sphere are the angels known as powers brightly colored hazy fumes who are considered to be border patrol agents between heaven and earth. Powers are also warrior experts in theology, keeping demons from interfering on earth. During an exorcism, for instance, it's the powers who are called upon to expel a possessing demon. The last sphere encompasses beings called principalities, the archangels, and the everyday angels who interact with humankind. Principalities are rays of light who oversee the entire world from religion to politics. They're supposed to have a princely authority, hence the name, and that allows them to lead humans and angels alike. Most of us have heard of archangels. They're the famous ones from stories like Michael, Gabriel, and Raphael. And they're also on the front line for dealing with humans, and as such, look most like us, and most especially me. They use this familiarity to pioneer exploration, philosophy, and human rights on Earth. Finally, there's the plain old angels. This is their proper name because they are the lowest ranking choir of the nine, the only ones who directly interact with human beings. They purify, heal, and lift us up as the guardian angels that have our backs daily. So now that you know all nine choirs and their pecking order, let me ask you, do you believe in angels? Let us know in the comments below and to learn more legends about these celestial beings, check out our complete article at HowStuffWorks.com. Oh, and one more thing, make sure you click the like and subscribe button if you enjoyed this episode because it's not like your guardian angel is going to do it for you. It's Angel 101.